Welcome back to the channel. This is Oblivion and tonight we are reacting to the new Tellius Children banner. Now, <laughs> I'm very nervous. There's a chance we get Duo Ike here. And to be honest, I don't really like the idea of Duo Ike being a kid version, but at the same time, it depends, I guess, who he's with. Like, I don't think it's going to be Soren just because we saw the silhouette. So it could be like Mist or I don't know, like a Lindsay or something like that. If I could have any combination I wanted though, it would absolutely be Grail and Ike. That would just be phenomenal. When it comes to the actual unit itself, I would actually prefer if like Ike did an Ephraim where he is kind of in the background, right? So like maybe it's a duo mist, but Ike's in the background. So that way we can get future Ike later on, like on a pirate banner possibly. That would be amazing. The other thing that I'm definitely considering is what they do with him, right? Is he going to be another red sword? We have so many red sword Ikes. I'm kind of nervous about that. Even like we have a green axe Ike and that's pretty much it. So I would love to have something different. That would be absolutely amazing. And then when it comes to his preference skill, I hope that they create a new one because Radiant Ether just isn't really keeping up with new preference skills nowadays. Like they're just so overloaded. So having an Ether with one less cooldown really isn't cutting it. Even if they give Radiant Ether two from Legendary Ike, I still don't think it would be the best. It might be okay. I'm not sure. I'm just hoping that they, they can give, you know, if it is dual Ike, I hope they do him justice, essentially. Uh, the For the other units on the banner, I'm really hoping that we can get, like, Boyd, maybe. Boyd would be really cool just because he'd finally be in the game. Uh, Alencia would be really cute. Nephany would be amazing. But I don't really expect that. I kind of expect, like, Mist, Soren, obviously Mia because she was one, uh, one of the silhouettes. And then something like that, some kind of arrangement like that. So I don't really expect to see Nephany at all, unfortunately. Anyways, I, th I think I've ranted enough. Hopefully we get something good here. Let's go ahead and jump into the reaction. Oh man, or am I <laughs> I'm scared that I'm going to like uh, be spending hundreds of orbs here, if not thousands. <sighs> here we go. Worlds can build the future. Words can build the future, I should say. <laughs> so, I'm so nervous. That's Mia, 100%. Yes, that is Mia. That is not surprising in the slightest. Budding Blade. She looks very cute. I'm gonna be the best oh, she looks so adorable. Oh my gosh. They really love Mia. There has to be like a Mia dev there. And she got the, the preference weapon. That's the other thing. I really hope they don't do this banner dirty. And I hope that all the units have preference weapons. I know that's asking a lot, but I hope so. And I also hope that the, the Tempest Trial unit is good. Like, give me a preference weapon boy. That'd be amazing. Okay, so let's look at this. Sharp War Sword. Accelerate special trigger minus one. If a skill compares unit speed to a foe's or ally speed, treats unit speed as grants plus 10. Huh. So it's like phantom speed. At start of turn, if unit is within two spaces of an ally, grants null follow up and dodge to unit for one turn. If unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grants plus five to all stats. I love that they are, they are making the explanations tiny right this could have been massive Yu-Gi-Oh text that could have took up like three pages and instead they just took the no follow-up and dodge effect and just struck it that's phenomenal i love that now when it comes to the weapon itself it's kind of okay but it's not the best honestly um you have to start the turn within two spaces of an ally to really get the effects nfu and dodge is amazing though like that's really powerful but you have to be very careful to make sure you're always within two spaces because if you don't have nfu and dodge this weapon essentially becomes plus five dollar stats which is not great phantom speed is interesting because it makes it very difficult to like outspeed her obviously which means dodge is going to be amazing no follow-up is better with speed absolutely uh what other effects i guess yeah mostly that because it doesn't actually uh it's just if a skill compares it's not actual speed so it's not going to affect doubles but it will affect Flashing Blade. So Flashing Blade 4 is there. That's going to help. And then she has a new B skill. Speed and Defense Tempo 3. Inflicts Speed and Defense minus 3 on foe. And neutralizes effects that grant special cooldown charge plus X or... Oh, there it is. So that's the guard effect we've had, right? Like the anti-guard effect we've seen on units like um, female leg Legendary Female Byleth and, like, and Brave Erica, right? So that is interesting. I knew that was going to become a skill eventually. And now that is there. So overall, this Mia can have... Dodge, no follow up, plus five to all stats, special acceleration, and anti guard. It's pretty cool. Special cooldown count minus one, two. Okay, let's keep going. We'll, we'll check this out more later. But she does look pretty decent. I don't think she's. I think she's gonna be good, but I don't know if she's gonna be like ultimate top tier. Next. There's Sword. Oh my gosh. His art. What the? Like, they like took the lines out of his art. 
Like on his face, look at that. He looks so good. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Oh, they made him not be able to talk like an... He can't understand though in the game. He just can't talk well. So that's interesting. And he's colorless tome. Ooh, please preference weapon. There's a preference weapon. And times pulse and mere impact. That's some good fodder, but I, I don't think I'd ever sack him. Probably. Adroit War Tome. Expelliarmus, special trigger, minus one. So far, they both have that. Uh, at start of combat, Dune's HP is greater than 25%. Attack and res plus six to unit during combat. And the following effects will occur based on the value of unit's res minus foe's res. So he's going to have to have high resistance then. If resistance is greater than one, or greater than or equal to one, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. Does that mean he's going to be slow? That's interesting. Uh, if greater than five, if foe uses sword, lance, axe, bow, dagger, beast damage... Holy crap. So that's like pretty much wind sweep, right? Yes. Yes. Foe can't counter attack. That's really strong. If greater than 10, reduces the percentage of foe's non-special reduces damage by X skills by 50%. Whoo! This is a good sword. Holy crap. So like you obviously run... What do you run here in this B slot? Like a lull maybe? Oh man. So he can like essentially go in he can like smack them super hard twice he has accelerated special cooldown and times pulse so he can like instant rupture sky so on and just completely blow them up and then they can't counter attack as well as long as his resistance is higher which is very interesting because usually that's speed right but speed is such a prominent stat in the meta right now that it's pretty um easy to outspeed units like like even premier units if you invest enough and if you support them enough, it's pretty easy to outspeed them, right? So resistance is actually much more difficult and less frequent, which means he'll probably get that most of the time. Which means he'll not only be able to get the guaranteed follow-up attack if they're not using NFU, but he'll also get to hit them twice without them being able to retaliate, which the first hit will be special. And then lastly, that damage reduction um, by 50%. So that's like lifts effect, duo lifts effect. So that's very, very powerful. Oh man, this unit's actually, so far this banner is looking pretty good. I bet Soren fans are pretty happy. He does look so sad, though. He's so dirty. Which, you know, is canonically correct, I guess. When he meets Ike, he's not in good shape. That looks like that's... What? No. Okay. I'll be honest. I'm super disappointed. Like, uh, I know there's Ileana's a very popular character, but she already has, you know, two versions in the game. Why would you not put in Boyd? Or oscar or alincia or anyone why are you putting an iliana or nephni like iliana really come on man she's already gotten enough in my opinion Ugh. she's the four star demo right again isn't she wasn't she already a four star demo wait this is she a four star demo she has low attack res there's no way right they're giving away low attack res on a four star demo that'd be insane uh, grants res plus three if foe initiates combat or foe's HP is greater than 75% of star combat. Attack and res minus six on foe during combat. And also if unit's res greater than foe's res reduces damage from attacks during combat and from area of effect specials. Okay. And also if unit's res is greater than res plus foe, foe cannot make a fall attack. So essentially she has uh, attack and res minus six, damage reduction based off resistance, and then an impact effect in her weapon. Definitely very good. I'm just not a fan of Ileana taking up that spot, considering that she's not really... There's better options if you want to do like a Grail's Mercenary Child banner, right? In my opinion. Like, why Why isn't this Boyd? I'm, uh, I'm honestly really disappointed with that. Or Alincia, dude. Alincia could have been amazing. That's a big Glacies. Holy crap. Here it is. Is it gonna be missed or Ike? Ike I'm with you. It's Ike. Okay, so we got duo Ike and he's a child. Oh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the biggest fan. The art is very, very adorable though. It, oh, and he's a red sword again. I should just watch the rest, I know, but I'm honestly like, we have so many sword Ikes. I really wish that it was something different. This isn't for fun. I need to train. Also, he's color sharing with Mia.
Uh, uh, okay, I'm already seeing things I don't like, which is Radiant Ether. Like, his weapon's gonna be really, 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 really busted in order to make up for that, because Radiant Ether just is not a preference skill compared to other new ones nowadays. So let's look at Sturdy War Sword. Grants attack plus three. Okay, it's not cooldown reduction. That's already kind of iffy. Uh, at start of combat, if unit's HP greater than 25%, grants plus five to all stats to unit during combat. And if unit's attack triggers special, the following effects will occur based on the number of allies within four spaces of unit. Oh, I really don't like that either. Oh, oh god, I'm so dead. <laughs> uh, if greater than one before unit's first attack, grants special cooldown count minus X. X equals 50% of unit's max special cooldown count. Rounded down. Okay, so essentially, if you have one or more units within two spaces, you immediately get your special charged to two, right? Yes. So then you would need one set of special acceleration and you'd attack back with a Radiant Aether immediately. That is good. That does fix one of Ike's major problems where he needs to have a special hit on the first hit so that he gets the healing, right? That's one of the major problems with Radiant Ether as a, a special, is that if you if it goes off on the second hit, typically they're so low on HP, you don't get much HP back. Like you're healing for as much as a noon time when you really need to get those big juicy like soul heals, right? So this does help that to an extent, but that does still mean he needs special acceleration. So let's keep going. If greater than two reduces damage from foe's first attack by X percent, X equals units max special cooldown count times ten. So this would be four, four times ten, so forty percent damage reduction. Okay, that's also pretty good. Uh, if greater than three, neutralizes effects that guarantee foes follow-up attacks and effects that prevent units follow-up attacks. Okay, and then he has distance dart, which is very, very, very good. It's just improved DC, but with speed plus five of the foe initiates combat. In my opinion, this is much better than distant pressure. The one that uh, Brave Marth comes with, I think that one sucks. I hate the recoil damage on it. Even if it is dual phase, I just don't like it. So I think this one is absolutely 100% better. Oh, uh, how do I feel about this unit? It's Ike, which makes me very happy because I love Ike. But I also, do, there's so much stuff I don't like. I don't like Radiant Aether, even though his kit is built much better to make a full use of it. And I don't like, he's a sword. <laughs> I really wish he was something other than a sword. I just wish, I, you know, we have like, what, four Ikes or five Ikes in the game and all of them are red sword except for brave ike huh i mean i'm absolutely gonna summon for him 100 million percent i'm gonna make a showcase on him because he's ike and i love ike he's my favorite character hands down uh, let's look at his duo skill and see what that does but i'm a bit nervous i'm not gonna lie Sixty-seven times two that's a that's a big hit let's see what it is oh yeah i see Ike, oh yeah, I see Grail and Titania, but I'm pretty sure that's base, that's Valentine's Grail, right? And yeah, normal Titania. Okay, dual skill, inflicts attack and speed minus seven and guard on foes within five rows or five columns, centered on unit through their next actions and inflict special cooldown count plus two on those foes. How good is this? I mean, obviously you're not using this in Aether Raids because it's, the only way you get to use dual skills in Aether Raids is if it's a dual skill that is active, right? Like it's a like duo Corins or duo uh, or harmonic azure or something like that right where you're killing the enemy duo unit or taking out the duo's hindrance and then you're activating it right with something like this it's not going to be really possible because you're going to have to kill the duo unit or multiple duo units or the duo's hindrance before you can even activate this so this isn't going to be doing much in ether raids in my opinion in summoner duels though how good is this Attack and speed minus seven is good. Five rows and five columns is a large area. It's a very large area. Guard. Guard is pretty good as well. And then special cooldown count minus two, or plus two. Uh, does it affect if they have their special charged? I assume it does. If it doesn't, it's really bad. But if it does, it actually has pretty good use, right? Because you can turn off enemy specials and in a sense you you really do want that on summoner duels like running pulse ties is pretty good the problem is is that duo crom exists and duo crom lets them control when their special is being accelerated which is uh absolutely massive in summoner duels like it, it there's so much play you can do with that so much 
mind games, so many ways to just dodge effects like this. Being able to hit this whenever you want is very useful though in Summoner Duel. So I think it's good, but it's not amazing in my opinion. Uh, I might change my mind though. You know, I might be completely wrong. I can miss look very cute. Oh my god, that range is massive. That's bigger than I thought it was. Holy crap. That's very cute. Here I go. There's Mia. Who's in the background? There has to be someone in the background. I really don't like Ileana <laughs> being there. It's Void! It's Void! Oh my god, Void's here. Yes! Is, please say that's a preference weapon. I can't tell. I'm really bad with weapon models. His HP is ridiculous. Why does he have 54 HP? Oh, that makes me kind of nervous. But it's Void. Void's finally in the game. I, I'm going to plus 10 Void. I don't care. He's so good. Like, oh, yes, yes, I have so many grails for Void. That's phenomenal. That's the best thing I've seen on this whole banner. Void is finally in the game. Yes! Oh my god. Oh my gosh, Void's in the game. Void is in the game. Void is in the game. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Okay, there's the, there's the Whale Spark. Man, I feel like I'm going to get a plus 10 Mia and not a plus 10 Ike, and I won't be salty. <laughs> Okay, I checked Reddit. I don't think I missed anything. Let's go through it one more time real quick. So Mia, Mia seems amazing. I, I don't know if she's going to be like ultimate meta threat. I don't know if she's better than Ascendant Marita is the problem, right? Ascendant Marita is really, really good. She does have a lot of a good effects though. Like all the B skills, dodge and a few, anti-guard now. She's going to pretty much always have the speed advantage whenever it comes to skill checks. So that's very, very good. I think she's be a very strong unit. I don't know how amazing she's be. I really like Soren, actually. Soren is amazing. I love his effects. I think he's going to be awesome. Ileana, I, I'm i so disappointed I can't even be on. Like, I'm sorry if you're an Ileana fan, but I'm super disappointed with that. She has so many. She already has two versions. Like, why don't we have another unit get into the game? Or some, I don't know. Just somebody else, to be honest. Okay, and then we have young Ike. And... How do I feel like? I wish he wasn't a red sword. I think that's my biggest gripe, is that he's a red sword. We just have so many red sword Ikes. Like, I have so many at plus 10 already. <laughs> oh, man. Like, is, is he the best Ike, though? Probably. Probably. So let's look at his weapon one more time. Sturdy War Sword, attack plus 3. I don't really like that either. I wish it was speed plus 3. I think speed plus 3 would be better. Or cooldown reduction. But then the cooldown reduction kind of works against this weapon, so maybe not. Speed plus... Yeah, I think I would have had speed plus 3. So plus 5 to all stats, above 25% HP. And if units attack trigger special, the falling effects based on the blah blah. Okay. So he's really weak to guard. <laughs> if he gets hit by guard, he's in trouble pretty much. Which is pretty typical of Ike, to be honest. So... He's gonna need special acceleration still. Because it's 50%. I wish it... I wish it was just like minus three <laughs> so that he could just radiate ether no matter what, right? Because the way it is right now, it will reduce it by two. So it will be at two. And then he's going to need some kind of special acceleration on enemy phase to hit back with the radiant ether, which means that he kind of has to run like darting breath, which I, I really would like him not to have to run breath skills anymore, to be honest. They're so weak now. Or he can run support, obviously, because he does need support units, right? Because it's based off of allies within four spaces. I also don't like that. I really, that's my reason that I hate Brave Marth. I don't hate Brave Marth. That's being, I'm exaggerating. Why I dislike Brave Marth is because he needs allies around him in order to get his effects. So I don't really like that. It's not very good in ether raids. You really can't always afford to have more than one unit within two spaces. Especially if you're not using a save ball. So essentially he'll get hit. He'll hit back with a special. If he has two or more foes, he gets damage reduction. Which is like, what, 40%, right? And it's only from first attack. So if he gets outsped, he's in trouble. He's going to get hit really, really hard on the second hit. And then if it's three foes, he gets NFU. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not, I'm not to give it some time, but I'm not the biggest fan. If I'm being completely honest. 
And his duo skill seems okay. Uh, special cooldown count plus two is very strong in summoner duels when you are running into teams who are pre-charging. But with duo crom, like I was saying, like it's not as big of a thing as it once was. I kind of almost feel like Mia is actually the the better sword unit now. Like just getting dodge all the time is very very strong, and if you all the time, right? No need of allies with anywhere around you. I guess you do need one ally for the the stat bonus at the bottom. Huh. 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 Well, I'm not sure how I feel. I am very, very conflicted. The one thing I do know, though, is that Boyd is in the game, and that's the most important thing. So I am very happy about that. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, subscribe, and also drop a comment. Let me know how you feel about this banner. What units are you super excited for? How do you feel about the overall power of this banner? Does this banner seem extremely powerful to you? Is this a skip for you? And how do you feel about Boyd joining the game? Because that is the most important thing ever. This has been Oblivion, and I'll catch you all later with more Fire Heroes. See you then. Bye.